Good morning students. Once again, I welcome you to my video lectures on control systems. As you know that I am continuing with time domain analysis of control systems. Now today I will continue with uh, the first aspect which I explained in the last class that is speed of response. Speed of response. Speed of response or the variation of output variation of output with respect to time. So time is independent variable, you know. So variation of CT with respect to T. Now to analyze speed of response, a student must start with modeling. As you know that the elementary process in control system, in analyzing control system is to model the system. So you have to model the system mathematically. So what you will do, you will write equations and you will write differential equations. So you will arrive at differential equations. So I will assume that you are going through linear control systems. So you will arrive at linear differential equations in terms of output. For example, d square c by dt square plus 2dc by dt plus c is equal to r, rt. So this is a second order linear differential equation. d square c by dt square plus 2 dc by dt plus c equal to rt. Where ct is output and rt is input. So this is differential equation. So analyzing speed of response always starts with what is known as modeling equation. So this is the modeling equation. Next, we have to solve this differential equation. As you know that in differential equations you have come across solving of linear differential equations. So as you know that the solution to any linear differential equation will have two parts. What is known as complementary function and particular integral. So any differential equation, linear differential equation will have solution in two parts, CT. So if I, if I solve this differential equation, the, the solution will have two parts. The first part is what is called as transient response. No, no, I don't call this now. I, instead, I will call this as, I will call this as, I will call this as complementary function. Complementary function. Complementary function plus particular integral particular integral now you remember for finding the complementary function we should not consider input so rt is made equal to 0 rt is made equal to 0 then what you will do you will use an operator called d d equal to d by dt so after replacing d by dt by d so you will arrive at d square c plus 2dc plus c equal to 0 or d square plus 2d plus 1 into c equal to 0. Then what you will do? I will remind you. You will write auxiliary equation. Auxiliary equation is m square plus 2m plus 1 equal to 0. So after writing the auxiliary equation, you will find the roots. Now there are three possibilities roots may be unequal roots may be real and unequal number two roots may be real and equal the second possibility third possibility roots may be complex and conjugate is it not so you will come across these three cases so based on these three cases you will write what is known as complementary function that is called as complementary function so this is the systems in control systems there are two influences, influence of initial conditions and influence of inputs. Influence of initial condition is reflected in this, so in this part of the solution that is complementary function. Now I will call this complementary function by another name what is known as transient response. Transient response. I think you are familiar with the transient response because you are all students of 
network analysis so transient response so i will group complementary function as ct of t what is transient response transient response means temporary response so as you know that in control systems we come across elements which can store energy for example if it is an electrical system inductor can store energy capacitor can store energy so resistor cannot store energy only it can dissipate power so we have inductance and capacitance inductor or capacitor in electrical systems in mechanical systems we have mass or inertia then spring dash pot is it not so mass or inertia can store energy it can store as you know that mass can store kinetic energy and and springs springs can store energy potential energy so they are all energy storing elements whenever you come across energy storing elements sudden the system cannot act suddenly to changes in the input if input is going to change suddenly then the system cannot respond to this it takes its own time to react so that is what is called as transients so transients means temporary they are not going to for a stable control system they are not going to last for a long time so they will act for some time and they vanish they vanish that is what is known as complementary function so systems having energy storage elements will exhibit a behavior what is known as transient behavior so trans that is what is called as transient response ct of t ct of t next once the system uh, once in the system transient response becomes zero then system enters into steady state so now the influence of initial condition is over the influence of initial condition is over now we have to take up the uh, the type of input so type of input is also going to influence the the speed of response so that is what is called as particular integral now i will call particular integral as steady state response steady state response so css of t is what is called as particular integral and while going through steady while going through transient response i was telling that energy storage elements because of energy storage elements there is a exhibition of transient now i will give the example of inductor for example if you take the inductor in an inductor current cannot suddenly change the reason is if current has a tendency to change then what is going to happen is emf is induced according to lenz law so ldi by dt ldi by dt is the emf it is going to be induced in the inductor and that opposes current so because of this current cannot suddenly change in an inductor similarly in a capacitor voltage cannot suddenly change so this is transient so transient response once it dies then the system enters into steady state that is what is called as in math in electrical language we call it as particular integral whereas mathematical mathematics people will call this part of the solution as particular integral but i will call in in the language of electrician electrical engineering as what is known as as steady state steady state part of the solution that is what is called as steady state steady state steady state response so steady state response depends on the type of input the type of input we give the type of input we give rt rt so this part of the solution is i will write it as c s s of t so c of t totally equal to c d of t plus c s s of t where c d of t is transient response and c s s of t is steady state response now i will give the example of an rl circuit i will give the example of an rl circuit now in an rl circuit in an rl circuit
if you close the switch if you close the switch at t equal to 0 what happens current is going to be established in this circuit now what is that current that current is given by v by r so current cannot exceed this value v r so inductor is not going to decide the current so it is only resistor which is going to decide the current so steady state current in the circuit is given by v by r but this current cannot suddenly change from 0 to i this is not possible in system the reason is emf is induced inside the inductor and that is going to oppose the current i i is going to be sorry not small i and right this i is opposed by emf induced in the inductor that is L dA by dt. So what happens instead of rising to this level what happens in an RL circuit in an RL circuit current varies like this current varies like this this is V by R steady state current and this is the graph of IT versus T. So this is what is called as response so current response in, a, in an RL circuit and current is gradually increasing larger the inductor larger the time taken by the system to settle so this is what is called as transient behavior once the transient dies out then current settles at V by R so this is what is called as steady state current so in this class I will have explained what is transient response and what is steady state response so summation of transient response and steady state response makes total response. So we are interested in knowing the behavior of this response. In what way in control systems the output is going to vary. So I will continue in the next class by considering uh, the, the different types of inputs. Thank you.